Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about trigonometric identities. Now the whole point of this video is to realize known trig functions as combinations of other ones. So let's start off with the basic identities that we already know. We already know that tan of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta, cotangent of theta is equal to cosine of theta over sine of theta, secant of theta is equal to 1 over cosine of theta, and cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over sine of theta. Let's expand on this first by looking at the inscribed triangle of the unit circle. We're going to talk about these things called Pythagorean identities, and they're going to come from the fact that in this triangle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Since the x and y coordinates can be realized as cosine and sine of that particular inscribed angle theta, we actually get the relation that cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to 1. And this is a result that's always true. To elaborate, let's take this equation and divide both sides by cosine squared of theta. This will reveal the next identity, 1 plus tangent squared of theta is equal to secant squared of theta. In a similar fashion, take the first equation and divide all sides by sine squared of theta this time to get cotangent squared of theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared of theta. So these three equations are known as Pythagorean identities. In our first example, we'll verify that cotangent squared of theta divided by 1 plus secant squared of theta is equal to 1 minus sine of theta over sine. With the use of these new identities, this isn't as bad as it might appear to be at first. I'm going to first focus on the left-hand side, cotangent squared of theta over 1 plus secant squared of theta. Now I notice that since by this Pythagorean identity, cotangent squared of theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared of theta, I can solve for cotangent squared of theta to get that cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared of theta minus 1. And then I can make this replacement upstairs to get that cotangent squared of theta plus 1 over secant squared of theta is equal to secant squared of theta minus 1 over 1 plus cosecant theta. The next thing I'll do is focus on this new numerator, cosecant squared of theta minus 1. And I can write cosecant squared of theta minus 1 as cosecant squared of theta minus 1 squared, which actually factors into cosecant theta minus 1 times cosecant theta plus 1. This is because we have a difference of squares. Making this replacement in the equation upstairs, I end up with cosecant of theta minus 1 times cosecant theta plus 1 over 1 plus cosecant theta. And then this cancellation gives me cosecant theta minus 1. Cosecant theta can be replaced with 1 over sine of theta, which simplifies as fractions 1 over sine of theta divided by sine of theta, which is what we wanted to show. So the tools used in this exercise were the use of the Pythagorean identity and the difference of squares and the definition of cosecant. Now we're going to introduce some new identities. These first two are called the sine angle sum and difference identities. The first says that sine of x plus y expands into sine of x times cosine of y plus cosine of x times sine of y. The second says that sine of x minus y is equal to sine of x times cosine of y minus cosine of x times sine of y. So up to sine, these identities look pretty similar. We've also got our corresponding cosine angle sum and difference identities. It says that cosine of x plus y is equal to cosine of x times cosine of y minus sine of x sine of y, and cosine of x minus y is equal to cosine of x times cosine of y plus sine of x times sine of y. We also have similar identities for our tangent function. Tangent of x plus y is equal to tangent of x plus tangent of y over 1 minus tangent of x times tangent of y. Then tangent of x minus y is equal to tangent of x minus tangent of y over 1 plus tangent of x times tangent of y. Let's do another example. Let's find the value of cosine of 7 pi over 12. Now the thing to realize here is that 7 pi over 12 is not a common angle on the unit circle but we can actually write it as the sum of common angles. It turns out that pi over 4 plus pi over 3 is equal to 7 pi over 12. Since pi over 4 and pi over 3 are common angles on the unit circle, we can evaluate them pretty easily. So I'll take cosine of 7 pi over 12 and write it as cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 3, and then use my sum and difference formula to get that this is equal to cosine of pi over 4 times cosine of pi over 3, minus sine of pi over 4 times sine of pi over 3. 
After evaluating these trig functions at these values, verifying with the unit circle, we find that this simplifies down to root 2 minus root 6 over 4. So really the strategy that was used here is we're looking at a non-common angle on the unit circle, and we'd like to see if that can be written as the sum or difference of common angles, which we find that it can. Once we have that, simply use the identities on the previous slide and go. In our next example, we're going to let cosine of theta equal to 2 over 3, with theta being an angle between negative 90 degrees and 0 degrees. And we're going to let tangent of phi be equal to 5, where 0 is less than phi is less than 90. So drawing this on the unit circle, we have a negative angle theta in the fourth quadrant, and we have a positive angle phi in the first quadrant. The goal of this problem is to find tangent of theta minus phi. Since I'm evaluating tangent at a difference, it seems like what I need to use is one of those sum or difference formulas that was on a previous slide, namely the difference formula. But we have a little work to do before we can get there. Looking at cosine of theta equaling to 2 over 3, we're going to draw the corresponding triangle to get some more information. If cosine of theta equals to 2 over 3, then the adjacent angle to theta is 2 and the hypotenuse is 3. We would have a missing side x, but the Pythagorean theorem tells us that x has to be equal to the square root of 5. But the problem also says that theta is a negative angle, which means that it's going to live in the fourth quadrant. And if theta is a negative angle, it means that the cosine part is going to be positive and the sine part is going to be negative. This would also mean that tangent is going to be negative as well because it's defined as sine over cosine. So looking at this triangle, we can take tangent of theta and then we just make our answer negative and then we're good. Therefore tangent of theta is going to be equal to negative root 5 over 2. So just to recap that, cosine of theta equaling to 2 over 3 gave us the triangle, Pythagorean theorem gave us the missing side, and then the restrictions on theta in the problem told us which quadrant theta was in, which ultimately told us the sine of tangent of theta. So we know tangent of theta and we know tangent of phi now. Therefore, we can look at tangent of theta minus tangent of phi and write it as tangent of theta minus tangent of phi over 1 plus tangent of theta times tangent of phi. Since we know the values of each of these individual quantities, we can plug that in. And then after you run through all the steps to simplify, you find that tangent of theta minus phi is equal to root 5 plus 10 over 5 times root 5 minus 2, and we're done. So we have two more sets of identities for you. The first are called half angle identities. And these are going to be used whenever you're evaluating sine, cosine, or tangent of an angle divided by 2. Notice that sine and cosine of theta over 2 have very similar formulas, except in sine, we are subtracting in the numerator, and in cosine, we are adding. And then, of course, we have tangent of theta over 2 equal to 1 minus cosine theta divided by sine theta. The next set of identities that we have are called double angle identities, and these are going to be used when you're evaluating sine, cosine, or tangent at 2 times an angle theta. So sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta times cosine theta. Cosine of 2 theta has three different forms. Cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta, 2 cosine of theta minus 1, or 1 minus sine squared of theta. The use of any one of these is totally okay. It's just best to use what best fits the problem. Lastly, you have tangent of 2 theta equal to 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared of theta. So for our last example of the day, let tangent of theta equal to 3, where theta is an angle between 180 and 270 degrees. In other words, it's some angle in the third quadrant. The goal is to find tangent of 2 theta, and we're going to be using the double angle formula. Using this formula, we get that tangent of 2 theta is equal to 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared of theta. But the problem already told us the value for tangent of theta, which is 3. So, everywhere I see a tangent of theta, I replace it with the number 3 and simplify down to get negative 3 over 4 as the final answer.